السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سعیدی و علیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Sayyidi, when Grand Sheikh said he extracted the names of the saints <coughs> with Sayyidina Mahdi, the Khalifas and deputies from yes. Surah Nam, was it through the Huruf or through the Muraqaba? Through his Sultan and Awliya powers. <laughs> so until you get to that point or, or we get to that point <laughs> inshaAllah, then I guess they would talk about it. But we had a much lower pay level so we can't dare to understand his spiritual power and what, he's, what he was given. But what is always taught is the Qur'an is alive. The Qur'an each huruf are malaika and they merely can connect their heart and it begins to flow like lights into their heart. So in their spiritual power how much he's going into that, how much he's retrieving from that, it's all the same whatever you ask. The huruf, yes everything's from the huruf because the huruf are angels and they can open the huruf like a door we said. That if you look at an alif, the, the angel that holds that secret flow into the heart. Then they open alif and alif becomes alif, lam, fa. Now more, three more angels came through that heart and now describe that reality. Then they open the alif again. And three more angels come into their heart. They open the lam, three more angels come because it's lam, alif, mim. Fa becomes fa, alif. So it means infinitely expanding just like the formation of a cell, right? A jimran you put alif and then you put alif, lam, fa. So one open to three. So just like a cell it starts to grow and then that alif, lam, fa Again below it opens alif, alif, lam, fa. The lam opens lam, alif, mim. And the fa opens fa, alif. Angels at each one. So each one then has a deeper encoded reality in which Allah gives to us, look. Then look again, then look again until your vision comes back strained. So with his spiritual heart looking at these huruf and retrieving its realities and, and the secret within the Holy Qur'an and the Holy Qur'an teaching. So these are the servants in which taqullah alimukumullah Allah is teaching to them and inspiring in them and, and, and the Qur'an revealing itself. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everything is written in Holy Qur'an. All, all of the kitabs of Allah are located within the Holy Qur'an, right? So always remember is that Malakut comes first. Dunya is upside down. So the coding for, for people who, who think their language is most advanced, so they say Hebrew is most advanced, Aramaic is most advanced <coughs> and, and the actual is no Arabic is the most advanced. So computer programmers <coughs> the equivalent is if somebody came and talk to us from the original IBM software and said that our, our software is most advanced because you were the first software for the first version of what a computer is. You think that's anywhere close to even the technology of an iPhone? No. So it means Allah doesn't give the most advanced first, He gives the least advanced. Through their knowledges and through their huruf they have an understanding. 
But the real program that holds all programs is the last one that's revealed, the final technology. Not the beginning technology, your phone from 1950 when you were dialing was not the latest technology. Wait until what phones come towards the end, that's the latest technology. I mean Qur'an is the latest technology. Within its reality holds all of the holy books because the secret of its hurufs has everything contained within it. So whatever was given to Prophet is a khatim, is a seal and is has infinite amount of realities within it. And to clarify, Prophet ana awwal khalqillah, I am the first and I am the khatim. So either way Prophet has the full package inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as salamu alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salam wa uh, Sorry for my ignorance, if we see ourselves already with Dajjal and all the difficulties at the end of times, are we not activating our power of manifestation? If you see yourself with Dajjal and are you manifesting your power of manifestation? Are we not activating our power of manifestation? Yeah, mixing maybe different things together. So we have an immense power of manifestation, shaitan knows that. So what we put within our heart, what we want to conjure, what we begin to think about, it provides a reality. But then it's different than to say, I'm with Dajjal, is that through inspiration, through your meditating and, and standing and sitting with Dajjal, then that's something different. So main thing is focus on is to manifest good, that manifest the, the love of Prophet manifest these realities, do the muraqabah, do all of the connections. Because ones whom trigger too much negative thoughts means that what you focus on focuses on you. So if you focus too much on Dajjal, 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 I want to look at all everything about Dajjal, Dajjal, well Dajjal then is now focusing on you because you, you're thinking too much about that. So it's like that one eye in the Lord of the Rings, he told them, don't look at that eye, don't look at that eye. As soon as he looked at the eye, the eye looked back. So, oh, now I see you. So, to understand, we give the signs and alamat, but you shouldn't be trying to sit and meditate and see that and be with that. And anyone who sits and meditates and feels a satanic attack and difficulties coming, the meditation is about connecting with the shaykhs and immediately to be in the presence of Prophet Wasallam's Rosa Sharif and being in the presence of the shaykhs. So always focus on the good and bring a tremendous good power and bring that power to begin to manifest. That's why if you walk around saying you're depressed and that uh, you're like this, you're like that, you're like this, you created now a cloud over your head and that cloud is guaranteed to rain upon you. You made it and that's all shaitan wants, oh you're sad, you're depressed, you're like this. We have to fight that, that's shaitan knows your power because if he whispers enough in that you say, yeah I'm depressed, you meet people say, I'm depressed, I'm a depressed person. So yeah you're saying so much it's like a cloud over your head, it's just raining depression upon you. So when you understand the power Allah gave to us to say, alhamdulillah wa shukranillah, Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah wa shukranillah. Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah and connect your heart with awliya, connect your heart with the love of Prophet and everything become positive, take control of it and push it. That is the jihad al-akbar, that when shaitan knows your power and you don't know it. So the great fight was with shaitan not with people to go around and hit people and take their money for what? Is you have to fight your devils. That's when Prophet described, this is a great jihad that when I leave you'll be fighting yourselves. 
So this is our, our life and this is our legacy, how to fight this devil, how to fight his whisperings, how to fight negativity because it's not coming from God. Anyone who, who thinks negative thoughts, everyone who has doubts, anybody who has oh, angers and all of these bad characteristics, they are nothing to do with Allah. Badness is from shaitan, doesn't come from Allah, doesn't come from your soul. Your, several, your soul never thinks bad, it thinks about paradise, about Allah about service. So anybody who dwells in, in that door and in that room is playing with shaitan. And if they exhibit anger and exhibit bad character, shaitan has overwhelmed them because the good character, angelic character, like we said modesty, humility and faith. Well, in there there's no room for, for excessive anger and disrupting the family, destroy everything with screaming, yelling, bad character. No, no, that you, you became shariq with shaitan and as a result this is all the, the corruption of bad character. So everything is about goodness, everything is about the ishq and love and muhabbat. Because uh, without ishq and muhabbat there's no proximity to the relationship of Prophet All that we're describing for people is a very merciful Prophet, very loving character of Sayyidina Muhammad If you are exhibiting an zalim, you're like Jangis Khan upon everybody, you can't imagine yourself being near Prophet because he's not sitting with Jangis Khan like that, right? He's sitting with people whom are loving and, and, and cheerful and good character and at least trying. So that's why then the shaykhs are teaching people, have good character, have good character. When you have good character then alhamdulillah you feel a security within your heart that like I'm able to draw near to that reality. For how could somebody whom harms everybody with their mouth, with their character and their demeanor feel they're near and sitting to the proximity of Prophet So no, this is… that's why this path is very real. What they exhibit of their character should give them a sign of their proximity to the relationship of Sayyidina Muhammad I heard on a, somebody put on a TikTok a rabbi was sinning, 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 sinning and he kept asking and then he asked Allah that, oh, I'm sinning all the time, how come you haven't punished me? Because he was wondering like astonished and Allah replied to him in his inspiration, I have, I actually kept you very far away. Isn't that a sin enough for you? All that you could have achieved of nearness and felt all this love and beauty that would have been my loving embrace. The fact that you know you're far away from that feeling is, is my punishment upon you. Next level is when I begin to hit you but before that is I distance you. So nobody wants to go to where Allah's beating them, it means the dunya is completely coming against them and smashing them but it's enough to recognize within your heart, I don't feel that nearness. Well why don't you feel that nearness? Something in your demeanor, or character, modesty, humility, faith is all being affected. And that's why we have muhasaba. we meditate and contemplate and every night ask Ya Rabbi, please grant my character to be good, to be, to be humble. Humble means to be kind to people, that to, to try to help and to be of service to people. So it, it, you don't, we don't want to work for shaitan, we want to work for Rahman, right? Humble people don't call people kafir because if you think somebody's not a, a correct belief, well how would you face Prophet that you didn't go and save them? Because you, 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 you're busy trying to give people to shaitan or you're busy trying to bring people to Rahman. And that was the way of, of the tariqahs and, and the shaykhs and their way of sainthood is that live a life of service, serve your family so they don't run towards shaitan. Serve your community so they don't run towards shaitan and if you think something is wrong you try your best to, to fix it within people and if they have to have a willingness in which to correct themselves, inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Sayyidi, if Imam Ali is the nukt under the ba, and all creation comes from the nukt, does all creation come from Imam Ali? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> it's a qudra, it's a power that Imam Ali salam is, is representing that power of that nukt. But all creation is from Muhammadun Rasulullah He owns those huruf, that from the light of Prophet is this huruf and its reality. And one of the realities of the, the qudra and the power in which Imam Ali Ali Allah's most high attribute is a dress in that reality. So alhamdulillah it's a dress of power. But creation is from Allah's proximity, La ilaha illallah eh, at one side of Qawb Qawsaini o Adana and the other side is Muhammadun Rasulullah So we described before you take two wires that when this wire comes so close it doesn't touch. As soon as it comes close the transference of energy is so significant that it creates that voltage and the, the energy charge to be released. Every charge of energy that's released it becomes a nukht because there's no mass. So in this world of energy this nukht keeps coming into existence. Every time that comes into existence entire universes are brought into existence. So this is happening from the reality of Qawb Qawsaini wa Adana. And that's the immense oceans of who, right? So when they give the dhikr of who, so that nukht and that power that comes because La ilaha illallah sends a qudra and a power. As soon as it gets near, O oh Adana, because the adab is that this, it's connected. So when you say La ilaha illallah from He, Muhammad, it connects to Muhammad so it's La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, unbroken. But the adab is this Qawba Qawsaini comes so close that Allah sends the energy and hits Muhammad Rasulullah and then the electrical volt means creation now comes into existence and continuously coming into existence at every moment or fraction of a moment or whatever the timing is that Allah has for creation. And each of those come in with this secret from who that power is coming from. Is from the hair of Allah that who of Allah So immense power, right? That's why we said then everything in that power ocean is related to who. So when they want to pull from that energy the dhikr of who is there because it's coming from that who. The hidayat from Allah hits to the wow. And that creation comes into existence because it's from wadood, from love. So Allah brings creation into existence from wow of love. So when they look at it it's coming from that who and then from the reality of the who has a hair, has a wow above it. Means that's the sign for them that every creation comes in with love, that Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. And that pearl of creation falls into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah It's not with Allah because La ilaha illallah means not don't look here, there's no shariq with Allah Allah is the power for His creation but not within it, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Regarding energy and its temperature feeling very cold or very hot during and after meditation, what's the difference between cold and hot? One is mm, one is how hot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to know too much, just be happy you got some energy, yeah. Heated energies, cold energies, it's just the flow of the currents and the different spiritual beings that are around inshaAllah. So your feet will be cold many times and these are energies and doesn't necessarily mean it's bad energy. And then there are times where you get heated and, and those are healing energies and those are also 
used for healing. So it's just a matter of making the energy connection and processing the energy. So overly defining it is, is not going to be limited to one instance is the reason we're saying. Because then you say, oh it's always going to be this, no. It's an energy field, so whatever is, is coming in that energy, is it needed for healing? They may feel themselves be heated up. Is it needed for defense? They also may feel themselves heating up because it's a defensive energy that's not going to come out. So it's just a matter of first make the connection and keep absorbing the different energies and the connection is most important. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Sayyidi, is this chat GPT, AI, jinn technology? All of them are jinn technology. And anything that has a chip in it is a jinn. So your phone has jinn technologies, the chat has jinn technology, your computer with this, the, the videos we've been making. Your, your, and the, the, the computer guys were very angry with that except our guys, the programmers who believe. Right? The computer guys are very angry that you're telling them the thing they love and cherish the most is a jinn because they get very angry, very angry comments. But the jinn creation is silica, we are carbon creation, they're silica creation. They reside within silica because their transference of energy and their comfort and that's how Allah created them. So the concept of a silicone chip was from who? Why would we make a silicone chip? <coughs> was them. They inspired these people that make for us this technology because it's from their world so that we can reside within that device and begin to automate your devices, right? So before they taught them how to make a home for them, we had a phone that had drrr, drrr. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so they gave them to technology, no, no, we're going we're gonna to bring some amazing stuff for you, make for us a, a chip made out of silica and their being has no mass. How many millions can fit within that chip? Not something that we can understand, right? So if you drew it from small and expanded it, it looked like a community, looked like a structure. They reside within that that chip and that board, everything because they have no mass. How they reside is not for us, that's not our world, that's their world. But from there is their central command. So anything they want has a chip in it. <coughs> they plan and Allah plans better. They want everything to have a chip in it. They want uh, your milk to have a chip in it. They want every device to have a chip in it and that they want to facilitate its movement and its energies and its realities. And Allah plans within their plan because He wrote their plan too. And what, what then was Sayyidina Mahdi salams takbir? That in one of his takbirs when he makes his zuhur and his presence known, his takbir is an immensely powerful electromagnetic pulse. The energy that Allah is going to send with His takbir that the angels will take and magnify over the entire earth. Not only the earth, they'll take it into the atmosphere of the earth, magnify His takbir, that pulse energy will shut down all chips. Everything, anything flying, moving, anything that's related to a chip, not their bombs, not their guns, not their planes, not their nothing will work. And it has no destructive power, it's just His voice. Because Allah gave in Surah Yaseen, Sayyhatan Wahidatan, it's but one shout and I decimate your entire population, your entire creation. It's but one shout, I can raise your entire creation into My presence. Allah doesn't need any, you know, bombing and blowing things up and no, just give one takbir and their technology cease to operate. So yeah, this is very powerful stuff coming, <laughs> unimaginable. So they think they are planning and being clever but it's all, it's their ultimate destruction because with everything that's going to have that chip, it's going to be one shout and Allah destroys it all 
in which nothing works and everything's back to normal, just swords, <laughs> knives and swords, yeah, inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Sayyidi, yesterday uh, PBS <laughs> came out with a video on aliens existing within silica <laughs> and you've been talking about this for years and now they're, why are they saying it now? Yeah. They find out, they know, they know and, and Allah's servants know. It's the people in between that are causing the problem because Allah knows this creation, He's made this creation. They operate within that, the conveyance of their energy is best within these, these fields. So alhamdulillah, it's, it's just a matter of time before people begin to understand. The whole digital system is for the arrival of Dajjal. He represents an entire digital system, block technologies, blockchains, all of this is, is coming as a one government, one world authority and Dajjal's currency. They plan, Allah plans better. So they think they have control, but Allah can make everything not work. Then what are you going to do? Goes back to gold and swords. Right? Everything goes back in time that all this advanced weaponry to kill and destroy people and destroy humanity, it's but one shout, Allah makes none of it work. Then you have, you've got to have some sword <laughs> skills and that becomes a sunnah to have your dagger and your sword. Mm. And when all their currency shuts down and their blockchains all the, the vanish and don't work, what happens? They have these gold coins, you have to bite, make sure it's, it's soft <laughs> and it's real. How they tested it in those times, eh? they, they see it's malleable and soft, mm. this must be real. Means everything goes back to a, a standard in which humanity back to normal and no violence. So people are thinking, you know, Imam Mahdi is going to come and it's going to be like, you know, battles everywhere, there's no battles, it's coming super high tech from heavens. That's what's the amazing uh, reality of Allah is that he merely just praises Allah and whoosh, everything shuts off. What could be more peaceful and beautiful than that? Nobody, nobody to be harmed. Those people want to harm everybody, destroy everything, manipulate everything, control everything. But Islam is a way of peace. Sharia of Allah that people are so scared of Sharia, it's the natural religion, it's the religion of nature. Everything in the sharia is all based on nature and that which is natural. Natural for humans to be modest and to guard themselves and guard their hawa. It's immoral and unnatural to, to be the way people are on social media. It's not the natural way of humanity. Look at the nature that all, all of the feathers that everything has and how everything is, is, is Allah created. So alhamdulillah that Allah inshaAllah bring uh, nature back, inshaAllah, the natural way and the, the way of nature, the way of Islam inshaAllah with peace and with the ishq and muhabbat because anyone listening to these talks always knows this is based on good manners, good character. So people who will survive these difficulties have to have good character. As a result of good character then they find themselves to be safe. If a person has bad character, how are they going to be safe from all of these things? InshaAllah. Sayyidi, so two similar questions yeah. came. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, what is the adab and discipline we should maintain while using this technology? And when one knows there's jinns running our iPhones, what should one do to protect oneself from them? Should we sleep without our phones? <laughs> you sleep with your phone? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's astonishing, that's scary because that will fry your brain, forget about the jinn. This is a microwave, it'll cook your head all night long. So you know definitely you know the knowledge is power. <clears throat> so to fear something, no, because you say, oh shaykh you're, you're using the phone all the time, of course all the time we're using it, we'll communicate with the entire world through our phone. But the knowledge is a power in which to understand who, who, who's serving who. If, if the so phone serves us and we propagate and do the work that we have to do, then alhamdulillah. Just like dunya and everything else that you have, it serves you or you serve it. 
Well, we are not allowed to serve it. So when somebody is a slave to their device and it serves no purpose other than propagating horrific things into their mind, into their heart, then you're a slave of that. But when you use it to propagate Allah's way, the word, the teaching, goodness, uh, you know, your commerce, your economy, whatever you need, then alhamdulillah. And definitely you don't sleep next to it or with it, you put it at least they say six feet away from you to be charged. So this is, these knowledges are not meant for us to run away, it's meant to empower people. That you know all of these signs then you know meditate, contemplate, have good character. If you think you're angry, so we go back to the anger and bad character. If you think you have anger and bad character and you don't fix yourself with this type of advice and we're telling you very horrific things are coming in which Allah is guaranteeing you will be cleaned at the hands of people whom have no mercy. Why would anyone want that? Why would anyone say, oh okay I'm not going to fix myself Ya Rabbi, I'll just wait for the people who have no mercy come and you know really sort of ravage my life and flip me upside down. Why? I said, no Ya Rabbi I don't want anything from that, how about I fix myself and that I'll fix my bad character and I'll spend all night long crying and say, make me to be a better person, make me to be a more humble person, make me… You know fix myself, spend my time on myself because there are people coming with very bad intentions and turn on the news. You see it all over the world, these crazy people what they're doing to each other. So but you know whom Allah wants to save and whom Allah says that this one doesn't need to be purified by that then, uh, then Allah doesn't write it in that program. So this is a time in which we have a, a choice to purify ourselves, clean ourselves, be good, be loving, be kind and alhamdulillah Allah will be happy. When Allah's happy and they have the love for Prophet why then to be punished by people who have no mercy? And they'll survive what needs to be survived inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Sayyidi, we heard uh, King Hussain say very similar things about nature and returning to natural ways. Oh, mashaAllah, <laughs> alhamdulillah. The king is the last of the Hashemite representatives of the bloodline of Sayyidina Muhammad the king of Jordan and their family, They're the Hashemite kingdom, they represent the flag of Prophet upon the earth, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can this spiritual path lower cognitive ability and how do we cope with this in an academic environment? Thank you Sayyidi. Lower cognitive ability? Cognitive ability being lower your brain function? Our spiritual path? No actually the, the concept of genius is what? Genies, right? So when you open up your spiritual ability, you're, you're opening a much more powerful reality that school, this Western system was incorrect. It was based on memorizing. So they now put a system in which memorize. So they take all their knowledges, bring it to the head which has limited capacity and tell kids, memorize, memorize, memorize. And as a result of 40 years of 50 years or 60 years of memorizing they all got Alzheimer's because they burn the circuits within their head, they put all of their computing within their head where the natural way was Islamic way that you were supposed to actually build your heart and that the heart is the CPU and the head is merely a screen just like the computer that God made you to build for yourself. So the natural way is the CPU. So when you train children to connect with their heart, meditate with their heart, they have TikToks and YouTubes on these children whom they teach like that, where they teach them to meditate, teach them to open their heart. They close their eyes they can see things. They can see things in the room, they can see patterns, drawings, they can see what people are writing because they're opening the process of their heart. <coughs> the heart is an infinite Google, 
So look at who brought your knowledge onto this earth. Yeah, Christians were in the dark ages, they didn't bring knowledge. They were cracking people's heads when they had a, a headache. Islam brought knowledges. Who were these who were these shaykhs? They were all awliya. Ibn Sina, they were big awliya. Who brought algorithm? Who brought all these maths and scientists? They were all the awliya and the students of awliyaullah. Why? Because they made their tafakkur, contemplation. When they would contemplate on the body, these awliyaullah would contemplate, Ya Rabbi what is this anatomy? Allah would make the entire anatomy appear for them in their tafakkur and it would move around like a slideshow for them, come out and begin to describe its function. That this gland is for this and it would speak to them, yeah, advanced technology. That anything they put their heart to would begin to appear to them, describe its reality, what Allah created it for. So now go back and read to Ibn Arabi and Ibn Sina where he describes the bile systems, describes all of the, the capillaries, describes everything. How? You think by ripping human people together they weren't touching anyone. They weren't allowed to, to, to sacrifice people and to go into to teach these anatomies. But Allah was opening for them the, these realities in which it would appear to them. When they studied the sun and the moon it would appear to them. It would show its rotation, show its reality, show its course, its speed, everything because Allah's great. When they were in, in medicine and pharmacy, anywhere they walked in the jungle, the flowers and the bushes would appear to them and say what they were created for. That Allah created us for this and I'm a cure for this or I'm a poison for this, digest me for this. And the garden talks to them, Zaitaqullah wa alimukumullah means Allah will make all His creation to come and to serve you and teach you. So the heart had that capacity. They had no phones and you could contact your relatives. That, oh I have a sense that somebody's passed away tonight, I have to start journeying back. How? Oh, there was no cell phones. But people were communicating with their hearts, so it means the power of what God has given to us is diminished when you rely on, on technology because it's a, it's a power you don't use anymore, right? So when you sit and meditate then what happens? The heart opens and the heart has now infinite capacity because we don't meditate in our head, we don't listen to the whisperings in the head. You're supposed to play also some sound that's peaceful and beatific for you so that not to think about your problems, not to think about any issues. But meditate in which to connect with the power source and to, to get resolution, to get power, not to go into issues and, and over analyze. So when the heart opens has infinite capacity to infinite knowledges. Like we're describing the huruf, they would sit and the huruf comes to them and begins to teach them that we're alif and the alif is for Allah's might and then begin to expand itself. Imagine then the numbers that would come and begin to teach them. Before that the Western world was using Roman numerals. Could you imagine making a computers on X and V's and, and what, I's? It didn't work based on that. All of this technology is based on the nukht, right? Because the nukht became a placeholder in their math. And then their whole numeric systems were born based off of that. Algorithm is all based on that. So all the technology they owe to Islam and those were people who were natural and meditating, contemplating and Allah was inspiring their creation. They can make energy, they can make uh, engines, they can make all of this. The pyramids were not uh, sarcophagus, they were not graves and, and tombs, they were power stations. They powered the entire city based on energy, based on water, based on sun. They were made as coils. They were insulated with rocks and limestones and granite and water would flow under the pyramids and the sun would hit the water and it would go under and it would release its electrons under mm -hmm. and the structure of the pyramid would take the energy and then send that out for their services and for whatever they needed. So it means these structures and it's so advancedly built that it can't be destroyed by either a flood or earthquake. Where now we build buildings that fall down 
So what was that technology? But by people of the heart and by people of meditation. Now that they used only their head, what did it get them? Alzheimer's. Why? Because they fry the circuit of the head, they, they put too much emphasis on their head and by 80 years old the head no longer can take the, the, the energy that they're putting into the circuitry. So Allah describes them like donkeys carrying books because you have to keep all these books with you everywhere you go to remind yourself what you learned. But the alim and those who make tafakkur and contemplate, there's no books for them. What they learn is in their heart. What Allah conveys is within the heart. There's no series of books to put down and say, this book said this and this book said that and you have to take your books with you everywhere you go just in case you forget. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.